Guys, cardio for days. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's, to your point, the, the Tonin versus Canuto match, the, that, that might have been match of the year for me. That was unbelievable. So, um, so we're underway here. Star striped rash guard for Gary Tonin, immediately fainting that he's going to put some of that fantastic wrestling we saw yesterday into use JT Torres, though. Gripping up, staying stoic. He's so calm throughout the entirety of the bout. I, and personally, I honestly think if these two were on the opposite sides of the bracket, this would be the final. Yeah, I think that's that's a fair comment. The winner of this is going to meet the winner of Wagner Rocha, Wagner Rocha and Dante Leon. And it's Tonin pushing the pace early here in on that two-on-one. JT framing away with that head position, really trying to get his hips back as deep as possible. And Tonin heavy on that shoulder. Yeah, not letting it go. Looks to sit to that... Uh, Smash Kenny Bassanami, but um, we know Tonin, you know, due to the time he's been putting into his MMA career, he's been spending a lot of time in the wrestling room, and boy, did we see it yesterday. Yeah, his wrestling is fantastic. JT's wrestling is always phenomenal. So this this could be a wrestling masterclass, honestly. Shot from Torres, body lock, gets oh. to the back. Tonin tries to Granby out. Going to frame away here. Can Torres stay locked and find a route to the back from here? Torres is the first person to be able to put Tonin down and hold him there. Uh, Canuto did have that one good trip in the, the early sequences yesterday, but the thing with Tonin, and particularly yesterday as well, he's so free-flowing. He's you know Particularly when there's no points involved, he's not that concerned about ending up on the bottom here. JT is so technical, looking to, yeah, to okay. either go to Crab Ride. Yeah, now yeah, he's going to go to go. Crab Ride because he has the body lock. That's where Crab Ride is effective. Go single hook now. Tonin trying to sit up, inch his way back. JT forced to release JT the body lock. It, though, but he gets on top. And he'll get, oh, there's no points. Nope, no points. Not points. <laughs> <laughs> All that work, oh my goodness. But that's what I love is these guys are not sitting back on their laurels. They're really going for it from the off. Oh, yeah, I'm sure both... Both competitors feel that they can finish the other one. So we're through uh, two minutes here early. Josh Palmer, John Evans bringing you all the action from Matt One here at the ADCC 2019 World Championships from Anaheim, Los Angeles, California. Gary Tonin trying to work his guard game here as a heavy sprawl pass coming in from JT Torres. Yeah, and that's his answer to that butterfly coming in. And we saw it yesterday. It really does shut down that butterfly hook. Tonin trying to throw the butterfly hook and JT immediately sprawling those hips back. JT trying to keep both knees together of Tonin's. That's going to be beneficial for him. Tonin wants his knees wider if possible. Yeah, trying to frame on the shoulder switches to double unders now, and he's going high on those shoulders to try and stop JT from being able to pummel his hands back inside. Goes. On that straight arm, we saw JT caught a couple of times by Ross Nichols in the first round yesterday with those straight arm bars up on the shoulder. JT oh. now with the head and arm control. And that's one thing he does so well in passing. As soon as he locks down that upper body, it is brutal for his opponents. Yeah, he's very, very heavy, very strong. Not able to keep it, though, because Tonin's leg work was really good. And Tonin isolating this arm again. Yeah, I wonder if he watched any footage from yesterday to see how uh, JT got on. He's got the butterfly grip with his hands. We did see Tonin play a bit of guard yesterday as well in his match before standing back up in the S overtime period. Slips off, looks to butterfly sweep. Just a change of direction in the hips and the sprawl from JT is horrible. It gets yeah. so wide, you've got to figure any of that weight on the end of a lever, you're just not able to use it effectively. Yeah, JT's passing is just, I think in Nogi it's second to none. Yeah, trying to stay heavy here, tricep grip, tone and framing. Really trying to keep some of the pressure off his upper body, but we saw JT do this yesterday as well, really claw and pull in on the head as he was looking to pass. Yeah, he's got to be a terrible passer to play guard against. Just even if he's not passing your guard, he's punishing you for it. Yeah, he just makes you carry and constantly defend, be on the back foot, just get worn out and just trying to maintain your, your defense. Yeah, I mean, just... When, when Tonin is pulling, when he has um, his uh, arms clasped around one arm of Torres, Tonin's winning. But when he's pushing, he's typically losing. And just watch how often Tonin has to push. 
So Tonin, a little bit compromised here, perhaps. He's got that high leg over the top. Oh, Can't and look at this folding Tonin. Oh, yeah, and if JT connects his hands together, it could be horrible for, for Gary Tonin. But Tonin pushing again. Points have just come in here. And if JT completes a pass now, it will uh, award the three points. Tonin looking for that leg. He's got an underhook with his left arm around JT's right leg. He's going to look to invert all the way and throw his like right leg over. Yeah, it does look like he's connected his hands. JT, JT trying to stay heavy on that leg. Yeah, he's trying to stay in front of that leg as well, isn't he? Stop it being used as a frame against him to knock him back off balance. That's tough to do. If he can grasp his hands and, and maybe like a head and arm control, the way he had, where he can keep Tonin folded. Yeah, Tonin with this scoop grip now, but JT really weighing heavy on him. Tonin spending a lot of time compressed up. You've got to wonder, is that going to affect his breathing as well? Tonin's in such good shape. Oh, he, oh. he really is. Moving for that leg lock, but JT immediately steps out. But having said that, Tonin's in such good shape, but he might be the more tired of the two, and that might affect them later on. Yeah, if we go to overtime, they will, of course, get stood back on the feet, and it will effectively start as a wrestling match again. Can't see either one of these two accepting a negative point for a guard pull. Yeah, I like the way JT just stuffs that leg in between his legs with Tonin's. You can see he's just got so much weight. Just tries to throw this knee shin. cut. Tonin throws that lasso just to prevent the knee cut. I mean, Tonin's a staple coming in from JT with a bit of leg pumping. Tonin back to his feet. And yeah. Ooh, dangerous moments as JT tries to hang on to that single. Tonin had that collar tie, and he used that lasso. Ooh, and that was the takedown that JT used yesterday yeah, against uh, DJ, DJ Jackson. Jackson. That outside reap once he connects to the hips. Tonin with a heavy sprawl. We did see his sprawl over and over again yesterday when Hanato Canuto tested it, and it looked to be on point. It's three minutes left to go. Score is 0-0, zero, zero, which is, <laughs> I mean, so much has happened. That's nuts to say. JT does have a takedown, but he didn't get points for it because it was in the first half. Yeah, that was a lovely sequence from him. Probably the most decisive part of the match. Forehead to forehead here, fighting grips. Big arm drag attempt from Tonin again. We saw that yesterday from him. Used to great effect. JT going searching. Tonin front headlock series. Snaps him down to the mat. Cuts the angle nicely. Tries to go to the back. I think he was looking for a crucifix there for a minute. JT well defended, but that's I, maybe the, the most we've seen done against JT so far in this tournament. One thing I, I haven't seen from JT is him fail shots that often. When he chooses to go, he usually gets in and at least gets partially the way or completes. Uh, if Tonin's able to stuff a couple more of these, that's going to be really interesting to see how JT has to adapt. Yeah, I agree. I wonder if that's going to start to play in the mind of JT. Although JT does have that iron will, so as does Tonin. His demeanor never changes throughout the whole match. You know, it's, it's unreal how focused he is. 1.53 left on the clock here. JT Torres, Gary Tonin vying for a spot in that under 77 final. Tonin running through on a knee tap, not able to connect. They nearly fly into Stuart Cooper. Reset back in the center, and I like what Tonin's doing. I think we saw yesterday against in his Canudo match, his snap downs are yeah, you just see disgusting. Again, he tried it there, and they're really getting stuck in. They're really pushing the pace. You can see every grip has intention. There's aggression. There's That's just less time as well. Heavy shot, heavy sprawl. He's got one hand around the side. Tonin hips flat to the mat, looking to stay sprawled out. JT has to abandon. And I think this is where Tonin is really good in this front headlock position. Yeah, he's, uh, he, has he got double overs here? I can't quite tell. He's got to be careful he does not have to- double overs, so yeah. Oh, tries to roll over the top. He's got to be careful not to give up. Yeah, that's a risky yeah. game to play. He's going to go- looking for an inverted triangle. Could go if he connects the legs. He's got to be careful not to get sat down off this though. Just 53 seconds left. JT's going to open the grips up. Tonin with a, a body lock here at the back. JT creating space on that lever. Tonin trying to get in on a leg. Doesn't want to end up oh, on the bottom, he though. both legs, though. This oh, is dangerous for he, JT. Yeah, well, it looks like that, that left ankle of JT might come out. Yep, Tonin might try to scramble up and go for the calf crusher, though. If there's space, they have got to come up quick, though. Both of, both of these guys are going to try to scramble right at the end, right up to their feet. Yep. Oh, there we go. 
23 seconds left, still no score. Good entry from Gary Tonin though, really pushing the pace here. Yeah, his snap down to front headlock, and front head and arm is, uh, I think that's, that's where he should stay. He's having success there. Resetting edge of the mat. A double unders for JT though. Five seconds left, tries to trip. Tonin sprawls, goes for the Haragoshi. Oh my goodness. And we are going to go to overtime here in Gary Tonin versus JT Torres. Do not take your eyes off this mat. So much on the line here. We're going to continue this battle on the feet. Tonin again looking for a snap down. Torres double plum clinch briefly. Good head position from JT. He has the advantage here. Yeah, Tonin snaps down, goes searching. Now more neutral. Tonin with the better head position here. Not as good arm position, but look for Tonin to free that arm and shoot down quickly for a single or a double. Yeah, it's a good underhook on the right oh, side, and he's to the body lock. Yeah, got for in on JT. the hips. Is Tonin going to try and Granby out? He's got to be careful. This is how he got taken down in that. First five minute period when points were not an issue, but in this overtime, it could spell the end for Gary Tonin. JT taking his time as he tries to circle round, looks for the trip, whizzer from Tonin. JT's got to be thinking that Harai is coming in any moment possibly. Well, he tries to step in front. Yeah, I, I really like when JT was trying to throw that right leg in between the legs of Tonin there too. Interestingly, JT disengaging, obviously not feeling comfortable on that dominant grip. Yeah, Tonin is pretty good with those leg trips. The Uchi and the uh, Harai Goshi from there. That is a good entry from JT that's going to weigh heavy on the judges' minds, though, if we go to their decision. 3.20 left in this. JT again, good double under position here. Getting Tonin's arms extended above the head. Tonin with the hips way back again. JT with good position though. Yeah, connects the hands together. Double unders. It just looks so uncomfortable for Gary Tonin, but he, he spent quite a bit of time here and always seems to find a, find a route out. Yeah, he's actually nearly in a, in a full Nelson, even though it's from, from the front. <laughs> just because of the, uh, the neck crank ability there, having his head below his shoulders. Hitting the halfway point in this overtime period. JT, good head position up under the chin now. The work rate from these two, I mean, we didn't expect any less, but, oh, JT heavy in on the hips. Tonin tries to throw him. And JT is, well, Tonin has managed to turn to Turtle, so. He's gonna avoid points. Yeah, but he's gotta defend the back here. This is also obviously gonna weigh heavy. Oh, they're gonna reset. Oh, oh my goodness, this is they terrible. Have to, yeah, they've gotta check the, the grips very carefully. 2.15 left on the clock. It just changes the whole dynamic because now they're going to give you lose the momentum. It's yeah. yeah. Both these guys very experienced competitors though. They're going to make sure they are happy with their grips first. Seatbelt hold for JT Torres. Tonin has got to block these hooks. First one in, almost trying to squeeze that heel through on the hip. Tonin's going to try and turn in, scrape his hips along the map, trying to address that that hook. 155 left. Tonin's got to watch out clearing that foot off with his arm. Leaves his neck oh, open. Oh, heavy step over. Big bridge and JT Torres to mount with head and arm control. He's going for the side choke. Yeah, and he is going to score the points. 2-0 for JT Torres here. He's going to play the either side choke or take the back game. It looks like... No. Well, Tonin defends well, though. Able to get back to half guard but he's still stuck in this head and arm choke and Torres is going to try to force through. And we know that Torres does not relinquish this grip for love nor money. When he gets in, going to try and slowly work his way up. He's obviously conscious he's going to be burning time off the clock as well. Yeah, JT really just could stay here and hold the position and win this match. Well, I think that might well be what we see. He's not going to take any unnecessary risks. Tonin clears the hook. JT looking to go back to mount here, which I think will be a rescore if he's able to 
flatten Tonin a little bit more and hold that position. Tonin does collect the leg, but he's still in jeopardy. If he tries to, to uh, get back to half guard, he's going to have to flatten his back, and that's going to put him deep in the head and arm choke. Yeah, JT clearing the leg, moving to the back. And if he turns away, then he gives his back, which is exactly what he's doing right now. Just 33 seconds left in this one. You see Torres staying really tight, squeezing, doesn't want to relinquish one millimeter to Gary Tonin here. But Tonin's got to do more than just escape. He's in well, a that's it. He's got, to re he's got to rescore as well. And even then, it's going to have to be decisive for the, the judges to give it to him. Look for the Granby here. Or he's going to go for a rolling knee bar. Yeah, rolling knee bar. Good oh, last ditch attempt. He actually has it locked up. Oh, he's this in. is tight. Gary Tonin bridging for everything he's worth. Four seconds left. JT Torres expressionless in defense. And they are going to see the timeout. Gary Tonin slaps the bat in despair. JT Torres books his place through to the ADCC 2019 final. What a match.